Hello, this is Brett Lonsdale from Lightning Tools, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the Lightning Conductor to aggregate your planner plans and planner tasks inside of Microsoft SharePoint Online. So I've got a new communication site created, and what we're going to do is go through and add at least uh, an instance, first of all, to our page of the Lightning Conductor. So we can go through and select that, and we're going to click onto the Configure button to launch the Quick Configuration dialog. And it's within inside this Quick Configuration dialog that we can do some of the more common types of aggregation. Um, but don't forget, we've also got the Advanced mode where you can do a lot more as well. So inside the Quick Configuration, we've got a few different lists and libraries that you can aggregate from uh, within inside of SharePoint. Uh, but we've also got some graph entities as well. And uh, we've also included Microsoft Planner Plans and Planner Tasks as part of those graph entities. And uh, we've also got users and messages and OneDrive items as well. Uh, but there's a lot more that you can also get at as well by going into the advanced mode. So we're going to choose the Planner Plans. And there's a view that I'm going to select. It's the only view at the moment called All Planner Plans. And we're bringing that data in from Microsoft Graph. And we're going to display it inside a grid view. And all I have to do is hit Save. And notice that we've now got some planner plans coming back inside a grid view, which we can also go through and format if we want to. So I'm now going to grab another instance of the Lightning Conductor and drop that immediately beneath this one. So uh, we've added that and we'll click on to configure. And this time we're going to go through and select the planner tasks instead of planner plans. And uh, again, there's uh, a couple of different views. We've got my planner tasks and we've also got all planner tasks as well. And again, that's coming from graph. I'm going to display it inside a grid view. So we've now got our tasks and we've got our plans. And what I now want to do is join these two together so that we can select a plan and see the related tasks. So what we're going to do is, first of all, select the initial instance of the Lightning Conductor. And we're going to configure the view here by going to the display tab and we're going to allow the selection of rows. So what this literally allows me to do, you'll notice as soon as I save this, that we've now got the selector to the left hand side where I can go through and select individual rows inside the planner plans. So switching my attention to the second instance of the Lightning Conductor, we can go into the properties of that instance and again, customize our view. And this time we're going to go to the columns tab. And inside the columns tab, you'll notice that we've got the title, the start date and the due date columns. We've also got a few different custom columns that we've gone through and created. These are calculated columns that you can add to the Lightning Conductor. And one of them here is the plan. So you'll notice as we click onto that, that there's a little bit of code embedded, which you get out of the box with the Lightning Conductor, uh, which is fetching the plan title. And what we want to do is basically add a filter to that so that we're filtering it based on the title column inside the uh, original column. So we'll click onto the filter icon and Notice here we've got uh, the equal operator. And rather than hard coding a value, we're going to click onto the little web part connection indicator. And in here in the drop down, we can go through and select other data sources. And one of them is the other instance of the Lightning Conductor. So we'll go through and choose that. And in the Lightning Conductor properties in the drop down, instead of retrieved items, which would be the entire table, we can work with the selected items, which is why we turned on that selection capability to be able to select a row. And uh, we can now go through and select which column value we want to pass through to the consuming web part. So we're going to choose the title uh, property in that case. So once we've saved that, we'll save our view. And notice it's not bringing back any tasks now, but if we go through and we select uh, say the online tasks plan, notice that all of the tasks for that particular plan are returned and we can go through and select other ones as well, uh, such as the product plan. So that's how we can relate the two Lightning Connector instances together. And uh, in order to make some of these different plans stand out or different tasks stand out, I'm going to do a further customization on the second instance. So again, inside the properties here, one of the things I'd like to do is to be able to highlight those tasks that I'm involved in. So what we're going to do is go back into the properties of the web part and under the display tab here, under the assigned to column, we're going to click onto the formatting. And uh, on that formatting, um, we want to be able to highlight anything that's assigned to me. So I'm going to choose an icon uh, in order to do that. So uh, again, there's lots of different icons in here that we can 
go through and, and choose. So I'm just going to choose this little guy here. And the color that I want to use is the theme color so that it blends in nicely uh, with the site that I'm working on. And uh, we'll have that to the, uh, to the left of the value. Uh, so uh, then all we need to do is link that to the page environment. And under the page environment, I'm going to go against the current user information. And I'm going to bring back the current username. So we'll save that and save our view. And you'll notice here that any task that is assigned to me now, uh, we've got this little icon uh, displayed directly next to it. So the next thing I want to do is uh, also add an additional column. So we're going to go back into the web app properties. And under the columns here, we are going to add the percentage complete because I want to know how much I've already achieved of these different tasks. So I'll add the percent complete column. Uh, notice that there is no space uh, between the words percent and complete. So we'll sort that out uh, under the percent complete column here. We'll just add that percentage complete, we'll call it. OK, and uh, in here, um, we could format it as a percentage. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually go through and add a data bar instead. So we don't need a condition in order to display the data bar. We can remove that. You can show them conditionally if you wish. Uh, we're going to enter a maximum value, which is 100. And uh, notice again, we've got the theme color coming through. But if I wanted to, I could go through and change the color. Uh, but we'll select the theme color for our data bar. And uh, we can hide the underlying value or show the underlying value if we want. And so we can save that. And uh, there we go. We've now got a percent complete column. So we can see how well we're performing these tasks uh, with inside Microsoft Planner uh, when we connect these two uh, plans together. And if we wanted to group by the plan as well, so we're seeing all the plans in one place, notice that we could do so. Uh, so there's all our online tasks and our product plan tasks uh, grouped now. Uh, with inside that view. Okay, I hope you found that useful. And if you have any questions, please let us know on help at lightningtools.com. Thanks.